Hello guys, this is Shyam from SS Embedded World. Today, I'll be explaining you how to generate a sine wave using Atmega32 microcontroller. The softwares required for this experiment are Protease and AVR Simulator. If you don't have the softwares, then here is a card for the videos to download them and install them. Now, let's get this video started. Before going into the experiment, let us have some knowledge on the experiment. First of all, what is sine wave? A sine wave is a periodic waveform in which the amplitude differs with respect to the angle or time. So, it is generally given with the equations am sin omega t, where omega t is the time period or the angle and a max is the maximum amplitude of the wave. The pictorial representation of this sine wave is as follows. See, this is the periodic waveform since the cycle from here to here is repeating again after this whole time period. We have equal peaks on the both sides. They are plus a max and minus a max. In this way, the sine wave is represented. See, since the microcontrollers and digital instruments are discrete in nature, so the sine wave will be also in discrete in nature. Here we can see that the output at particular samples are taken and they are approximated to form a sine wave. In this way, the digital waveform looks. Now, we need to obtain this digital waveform using the Atmega32 microcontroller. So, for doing that, we need to calculate the amplitudes and those are to be given to the microcontroller in order to generate this waveform. So, the values to be calculated are obtained by using these formulas. See, the equation of this output voltage that is the digitalized output is V out is equals to A plus A sin theta where A is the peak voltage of the sine wave. Here we will be taking A plus A sin theta. This is because in alternating current we can see the values in both positive and negative of the y axis. But in the DC circuits the values below zero are taken as zero. So we will be shifting this sine wave with the amplitude which is equal to the maximum value of the sine wave. The maximum value of the sine wave is A so it is added to the A sin theta. Then the output waveform will become A plus A sin theta. And this output values which we will be getting by these calculations are not meant to be displayed directly. So these are to be converted into analog waveform. So for converting them into analog we need to use this formula that is DAC value which means digital to analog converter value is the value which is obtained from this into the resolution of DAC by full scale voltage that is twice of the amplitude of the sine wave. Here we will be knowing the output voltage with the help of the amplitude and the respective angle and the full scale voltage is taken as twice of the amplitude. But what is meant by resolution of the DAC? So the resolution of the DAC is explained as the number of bits that DAC can handle that is given by 2 to the power of number of bits. So if we consider an 8 bit DAC then the value will be 2 to the power of 8 which is 256. So by seeing this value it is explained that 8 bit DAC can handle 256 bits. Now let us take an example and calculate the DAC value for a particular angle. Here I have considered the full scale voltage as 10 volts and we are using the 8 bit DAC so the resolution will be 2 to the power of 8 which is 256 and I am asking to calculate the DAC value at angle theta is equals to 30. So first of all we will be extracting A from this that is 2A is equals to 10 means then A will be 5. So according to the formula which is given above A plus A sin theta that is 5 plus 5 sin theta and here we have taken the angle theta as 30 degrees. So 5 plus 5 into sin 30 which is 1 by 2. So 5 by 2 that is 2.5. So 5 plus 2.5 gives 7.5. And using this value, we will be calculating the DAC value of the respective angle 30 degrees. So the DAC value is calculated as 256 that is the resolution by full scale voltage 10 into the V out that is 7.5 which gives 192. So for angle theta is equals to 30, the DAC value is 192. In the similar way, the remaining angles are also calculated. So by seeing these steps, we observe that there is a need of DAC in converting the digital output into analog output. Since the Atmega32 does not have any DAC internally, we have to use an external DAC. There are number of DACs available in the market, but we will be using the DAC 0808, which is an 8-bit DAC. So let's take a look on this DAC. This is the pin diagram of DAC 0808. Here we can see that it is a 16-pin DIP module, that is 8 pins on either side of the module. Among these 16 pins, the first pin is no connection pin. It is left like that and it is not connected to anything, not even to ground. And the second pin is the ground pin which is connected to the ground. The third pin is VEE that is negative reference voltage and 13th pin is the positive reference voltage pin VCC. And the fourth pin is I output pin that is the current output pin. Here DAC value which is given to this DAC is converted into analog current and it is taken from this pin. 
the pins from 5 to 12 are the data pins that is the DAC value is converted into 8 bit binary code and it is given to these 8 pins as MSB of the DAC value to the first pin that is A1 and LSB of the DAC value to the last pin that is A8 and any electronic device will be working on some reference voltage. So for this DAC we have two references. One is positive reference voltage and negative reference voltage with the pins 14 and 15 respectively. And the 16th pin is compensation pin through which the compensation capacitor is connected to this DAC. Now let's see some features of the DAC 0808. Since it is an 8-bit DAC, it can take 8 bits of the digital data parallelly because we have 8 individual bits and the power supply rating will be from plus or minus 4.5 volts to plus or minus 18 volts and the operating temperatures are like 0 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade and every instrument will be having some accuracy errors. For this DAC0808, we have plus or minus 0.19% of maximum error and it has the settling time as 150 nanoseconds. Now, in order to work properly, there are some connections which are need to be done for this DAC while interfacing with any microcontroller. So let's take a look at them. Here we can see that the pins A1 to A8 are connected to the microcontroller through which the DAC value is calculated and given to this. And the positive power supply which is VCC pin is connected to the plus 5 volts and the negative power supply is connected to minus 15 volts. Since here we are not using any negative reference value, so we will be grounding it with the help of a resistor and the second pin which is the ground pin is also grounded. The 16 pin which is the compensation pin is connected to the negative voltage with the help of a capacitor. Now this capacitor is used to achieve the faster settling times. So according to the data sheet, the value of this capacitor is taken as 0.1 microfarad and the fourth pin which is the output pin is connected to an op-amp circuit. This op-amp circuit is used to convert the current into voltage because the handling of voltage is very much easier than handling of current. So the current output which is obtained from the DAC is taken and converted into the respective voltage level with the help of this current to voltage converter using op-amp 741. Now the output current I out is calculated with the help of a formula that is I out is equals to I reference into D7 by 2 plus D6 by 4 plus D5 by 8 plus D4 by 16 plus D3 by 32 plus D2 by 64 plus D1 by 128 plus D0 by 256. Here D7 to D0 are the digital inputs of the DAC value that is when the DAC value is converted into 8 bit digital data the respective bit values are taken in these positions and the output current is calculated to that respective to digital input. Here the I reference is calculated with the help of the V reference and the resistance connected to it that is 10 volts by 5 kilo ohms that is 2 milliamps is the reference current in this case. Since we have to convert the current into voltage we will be using a voltage to current converter using an op amp. The op amp which we will be using is IC741. It is an 8 pin dual inline package IC which has the following pin description. The first pin and the fifth pin are the offset pins which are not used much in the applications. So they are not connected. And the pins 4 and 7 are the power pins. Among which the seventh pin is the positive supply and the fourth pin is the negative supply. And there are two inputs for this op amp. One is inverting input which is represented with the negative symbol and the other is non-inverting input which is represented with the positive symbol. And the output is taken from the sixth pin of this IC. The 8th pin of this IC is not connected, same as the first pin in the DAC0808. So it is left as it is. Now let's check some features of this IC. The operating voltage range of this IC is 5 volts to 18 volts, which is given to the power pins. And in the op amps, the input impedance will be very high in order of mega ohms. So the input impedance of this op amp 741 is 2 mega ohms, and the output impedance of the op amp will be very less in order of tens or hundreds. So the output impedance of this op amp 741 is around 10 ohms to 100 ohms and the op amps are classified with the help of this low rate that is the rate at which the op amp can detect the voltage changes from the inverting and non-inverting inputs. So for this op amp we will be having this low rate of 0.5 volts per microsecond that is it can detect the change of 0.5 volts per every microsecond. And the voltage gain of this op amp that is output by input will be 2 lakhs. By seeing this number we cannot judge that it can be used to step up 1 volts to 2 lakh volts. The output of this op amp is very much less in order of 5 volts that is when we compare the 5 volts as the output then the input voltage which is given to this is in the order of micro volts or millivolts. And the maximum output current of this IC is 20 milliamps.
The circuit for the current to voltage converter is as follows. The non-inverting terminal is grounded and the inverting terminal is taken as the input and it is connected to the output with the help of a feedback resistor and the output voltage is given with V0 is equals to I into RF where the I is the output current which is taken at the non-inverting input and the RF is the feedback resistance which is connected here. So in this way the circuit is connected. Now let's take a look at the problem statement which we are going to work on in this video. So the problem statement is generation of a sine wave with a maximum amplitude of 5 volts using at mega 32 microcontroller with a sample interval of 10 degrees that is for every 10 degrees we need to take the samples and we need to produce the DAC values. I've already calculated the values for the respective angles and here is the table of the values. For 0 it is 128, for 10 it is 150, for 20 it is 171 and so on so forth till 360 degrees. Now we have got the values and we know how to connect the circuit but we need to know the algorithm in order to write the code to achieve this operation. So the algorithm required is firstly we need to initialize the ports and the variables which are required for these operations and the calculated DAC values in the table are to be stored in an order. So we will be using an array to store the DAC values and initializing an infinite loop and sending the values from the array one by one will give us the sine wave. So in this way the program has to be written. Let's check the produce connections of this circuit. See, we have taken the microcontroller and the DAC and the op amp. To check the output, we will be connecting an oscilloscope, which I will be explaining in the later part. Now let's jump into the coding section. See, this is the code which is required to generate a sine wave with the help of at mega 32 microcontroller. So in the starting lines, we can see that I have included the standard libraries and the AVR libraries using these two statements. And then I have defined the frequency of the CPU that is the clock frequency of the microcontroller as 16 megahertz. Since the clock frequency of this at mega 32 microcontroller is 16 megahertz. And then we will be writing the main program. Here I have taken one port as an output and I have considered a variable of data type integer which is i. Then I would like to store the DAC values which I have calculated earlier in a variable. So I will be taking an array named data with an unspecified size and then we will be giving the DAC values as per the table. And then the infinite loop is initiated with the help of this statement that is y1. Inside this loop we need to give these values one by one. For that I will be using a for loop which runs from first index to the last index. In this array we will be storing 36 values that is from index 0 to index 35. So I have considered a loop that is for i is equals to 0, i less than 36 and i plus plus. And in this loop I will be giving the output through the port d which I have considered as an output port using the statement port d is equals to data of i. When i is equals to 0, the data of 0 that is 128 is given to the port d. Now let's check the working of the loop. Here i is taken as 0 initially and it is checked whether it is less than 36 or not. Since it is less than 36, it enters the loop and gives the value data of 0 that is 128 to port d and then the next i value will be checked. Here the i value is incrementing by 1. So the next value will be i is equals to 1 and it is checked and the i is incremented to 2 and the data of 1 that is 150 is given to port d and this process will repeat till the i value is 35. At 35 the value will be incremented to 36 and the value present in the 35th index is given to the port t as output and the i is equals to 36 is compared with this equation. Since the equation is not valid the program will come out of this for loop. Since this is an infinite loop the for loop will be repeated again. So this will be continued till we stop our program. So in this way the program is written for this sine wave. Now let's save the program by clicking the save icon in the toolbar or simply by pressing Ctrl plus S. Since the program is saved, now let's compile this program and check for errors. So for compiling we need to build the solution. For building solution we need to press on this build icon in the toolbar or simply we can press F7. So on clicking build we can see that the build has started and the build is success with zero errors. So with this we can see that our program is error free. Now let's debug the program and check whether it is working correctly or not. So for entering into debug just click on the start debugging icon or simply press alt plus f5. On clicking this the compiler will build the program and then enter the debugging. This is how the debugger looks. The name of this debugger is debugging and stop. That is if we start the debugging it will run till it comes across a breakpoint. So we need to insert breakpoints into this program. 
Here the process for installing breakpoints is very simple. If we observe keenly, here we can see a light gray bar in our workspace. Now, in order to make a statement as a breakpoint, just click in the gray space with respect to that line. We can see that breakpoint is added to this line. And for removing the breakpoints, the same is done. Clicking on that red ball will delete the breakpoint. So here I have added two breakpoints where the first one is at the declaration that is declaring the port D as output by giving the value 0xff and the second breakpoint is added at port D in order to check whether the values from this array are entering into it or not. So in this way the breakpoints are added. Now let's check the values in the port D. For doing so we need to open the port D from the input output explorer. If you don't have the input output explorer then go to debug and windows and we can see here input output view. Just click on that and you will be seeing the dialog box like this. So now let's start debugging by pressing the play button in the toolbar or simply pressing F5. When I first click on the play button we can see that this arrow will be shifted to the first line that is DDR D is equals to 0 X FF. I hit the play button and see the pointer is indicating the first line. Now on clicking this play button again the DDR value that is port D value will be updated as 0 X FF. See the value is updated as 0 X FF and then the arrow shifted to the next breakpoint which is port D is equals to data of I. Now on clicking the play button we can see that the hex value of 128 is updated in the port D which is 80 and on clicking the play button again we can see that the next value that is 150 and its hex value 96 is updated in the port D and in this way the values in the array are updated one by one and after reaching the value 128 that is the end of this array the cursor will be present here only because since it is an infinite loop the loop will not break till we stop the program. So on clicking the play button again the same values will be entering into the port D. So in this way the continuous sine wave is generated and this is how the debugging is done. So let's stop the debugging by pressing the stop icon or simply press ctrl plus shift plus F5. Now the debugging is done so let's save the program and remember one thing in order to use the hex file of this program the hex tab in the toolbar should be highlighted that is it is to be selected in order to generate the hex file and the AVR simulator in this toolbar should be selected in order to achieve the debugging process. So in this way the program has to be written and it is to be debugged. Now let's check the Protease simulation model for this program. See this is the connection which I have showed earlier in the document. Here all the components that is the microcontroller, the DAC, capacitor, op amp all are taken from the program library. Now after making the connections as per the required one we need to see the output in an oscilloscope. So this is how an oscilloscope block looks. So for adding this oscilloscope we need to select this tab in this toolbar and select the oscilloscope and place wherever you want. So in this way the connection is made. Now let's dump the hex file of the program which we have written in this microcontroller. So for adding the hex file just go to the program and search for the solution explorer tab. If you don't have the solution explorer tab then go to view and click on the solution explorer. On clicking that you will be finding some tab like this. In this tab drop down the output files folder and select the hex file. This is what a hex file looks like. So right click on the name of the hex file and select the copy full path. By doing this we can copy the location of the hex file. So back to Proteus and double click on this microcontroller and paste it in the program file box and click on OK. Now let's run the program and check whether the output is coming or not. So click on this run icon or play icon and we can see that the oscilloscope is automatically popped. Since we have connected the A pin in the oscilloscope I have made that turn on and the remaining ports B, C, D are made as off. Now if you want to measure the values of this waveform just click on the one shot where the oscilloscope will stabilize the graph and click on cursors. You can see that it is denoting x and y axis so place it wherever you want. Here we can see that the x axis of the pointer is placed here. This shows that at this particular instant the value of the sine wave is 8.52 volts. So in this way the sine wave is generated with the help of Atmega32 microcontroller. The code and the simulation are available for you so please check the description for the further details. Please like, share and subscribe to SS Embedded World and hit that bell icon for further updates. If you encourage us, we will be bringing much more videos like this. It's your encouragement which led us to make these many videos in our channel. Please help us to increase more. Thank you.